Well, but we have time. Uh, so, uh, Elvira, great to see you. And uh, I'm really excited about your, your presentation and, and your keynote. This is about regional missions and values on innovation policy. And Elvira, who does know her, she's a great name already in innovation studies and um, works at the University of Manchester uh, and also leads uh, or co-manager co of uh, Manchester Institute of Innovation Research. And some uh, keywords from her latest uh, papers, anchoring talents in the regions, public procurement in innovation, understanding the evolution of entrepreneurial and university. So this is so exciting that I'm, you know, I should stop and <laughs> floor is yours or Zoom is yours. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Gary, and uh, thank you for the invitation. It's the same, I can't be there uh, in person. The same, we, we cannot be joining all in, in Estonia. I was promised good weather. Uh, by by Gary, <laughs> uh, as opposed to kind of uh, rainy Manchester. So I was really looking forward to seeing you, but there'll be other other times, I hope, very soon. So I'm going to try to turn my screen. Um, we were talking about technical problems, and I hope I won't be the one that um, kind of um, now. Uh, okay, no, that's not what I want yep. to do. And now shift to the full mode. Now I'm the one that is creating problems. Uh, okay, so I should be. Um, okay, I'll give you a second. Uh, there you go. Now, my computer. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm, opening, opening your slides. There you yeah, go. that's perfect. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna make my screen bigger. So can you use okay? Fabulous. Um if at any point you lose my slides or me, just let me know. Okay? Because I actually never presented on Teams. This is new for me. OK, well, um, thank you. Thank you very much indeed for the invitation. And this is, uh, I had to check the program for the title that I proposed because um, I couldn't remember. Um, so regional missions and values in innovation policy. Uh, so what I propose to do, and I think I, I'm going to time myself. I hope I won't go over time. Um, but do kind of give me an indication if I'm running out of time. And I'll kind of go fairly quickly through the first part because it's also all be very familiar to you. Uh, all this idea of kind of uh, mission oriented policies and, and so on. So I want to get to the kind of final bit where I think there is a kind of a missing uh, aspect or, or a gap where I think we don't quite understand where these challenges come from, uh, how demand is created, how can demand uh, lead to kind of new path creation and so on. I'm going to give you an example from uh, uh, that we use in, in a couple of papers and some final reflections. Um, so we all know that, um, you know, there's a bit of a kind of discontent uh, in, in latest years uh, in relation to innovation um, and some people are talking, OK, well, you know, we should be talking about the dark side. Innovation is not always good. There can be a conflict between uh, promoting innovation and promoting innovation agglomerations uh, and, and the social and environmental well-being of people and places. Uh, and also we don't un quite understand decline. Um, and, and kind of the dark side of, of economic geography. Uh, and at least in the UK, there's been a, a lot of uh, discussion now at the political level. It's big in the agenda. This, uh, you know, you know, probably know that the UK is one of the most geographically uneven um, 
places in 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 the, the industrialized world. Uh, so this is now big political issue. You know how you level up um, the country. Uh, and of course, uh, scholars have been talking about some uh, for some time about whether the innovation that we produce is good enough or it's just been kind of um, no focus on the important things, right? On on maintenance. I work currently on a project on on cyber security, um, which is an area that I know very, don't know very much about. And I was shocked to find out that the kind of uh, the foundations of the whole digital economy is. Uh, they're very shaky because it was not built. You were talking, Gary, about um, um, kind of dangers of the digital um, kind of advances in, in Estonia. Um, and, and because the infrastructure is, wasn't built with security in mind. So, uh, you know, maintenance has not been given enough uh, importance, foundational activities that um, are so important for the everyday life. And, and so, there are arguments about a rethink, right? And there's a very nice paper by Ron Martin uh, in um, Regional Studies, Regional Science that argued that, okay, we should maybe uh, rethink our assumptions and theoretical frameworks to, um, uh, to, 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 to be able to, or, or to be more prepared for, for these challenges. Uh, we also know that uh, for some time, and, and I won't kind of go through this uh, at, at length, uh, I, many people in this conference have written about this, the idea that the systems view that we have used uh, in our innovation policy, particularly in, in regional innovation policies and strategies, has been a bit limited because we think that the system is that thing that is out there, you know, that we can manipulate, that it has functions. And that's a bit static uh, and, and also been narrow because we tend to, to see it as a kind of sore hand for uh, R&D infrastructure, uh, creating knowledge as opposed to applying knowledge, as opposed to um, not just improving competitiveness, but also the well-being um, of, of of, of people acknowledging that, of course, innovation has a rate, but also a direction. And also it's been a kind of regional systems we've seen as this kind of bounded thing where um, innovation will depend on what happens uh, or, or how regional innovation policies are set. And we have also argued for some time that uh, innovation systems were not very systemic uh, with regards to policy implementation. Implementation was taken for granted uh, and in policy complexity was not something that was acknowledged um, by, by scholars. And of course, this is um, something that uh, a debate has been ongoing for a long time and we now have um, smart specialization strategies and a bit more kind of um, dynamic approaches, but still some of these issues haven't been fully resolved. Um, there is a, a normative turn anyway in innovation policy uh, at the kind of a more general, uh, if you uh, listen to uh, innovation policy scholars, um, they have all these uh, fancy words now about transformative, mission-oriented research oriented, problem oriented, um, many different types of innovation systems to actually um, reflect this idea that innovation policies should be about better innovations, right? So have a direction and it should be about uh, societal problems and needs and uh, not just about technologies, um, but the, the point of departure should be uh, challenges, problems. Uh, and that the state should be, play a, a, a more important role. So Maria Matsukato, uh, the kind of um, more visible uh, kind of scholar in this area, talking about the state shaping uh, markets uh, for, for better innovations and looking at system innovation, not just uh, technological, but also institutional social change and, and so on. And involving a, a, a mix of policies and instruments at multiple levels. Now, this is all very good, uh, but there are two issues that I think are not um, adequately resolved in, in my view. 
first of all, I think the idea of problems and challenges is kind of taken for granted, right? Uh, but who decides uh, who the challenges, what the challenges are, how, to, how are decisions being made? Um, so there is, I think, um, a lack of discussion about the kind of how um, goals and values are formed and, uh, and selected to inform policies. Also, there is still kind of a, a bit of a supply side bias where uh, the focus is still on solutions. So we're interested in social the challenges as long as there's a fancy solution at the end of it. And often the discussion is about the lack of innovation, this innovation deficit model uh, where we don't focus so much, we don't kind of think about the problem so much, but uh, the solutions um, are kind of, you know, is a solution-led approach still. Um, but there is uh, some scholars that are starting to, to discuss this, and I, I like very much a paper by Iris Vansenbock and colleagues in Utrecht that talk about the nature of problems and how problems and solutions are both um, complex and certain and contested. No? Uh, we, we talk about this idea of wicked problems, um, but wicked problems are about problems and solutions. So we need to understand uh, the uh, complexity, uncertainty and contestation both of problems and solutions. And all the, only then we can start to align those and come up with, um, uh, you know, a, a, a better better scenarios uh, for solving those, those problems. Um, and also these problems or challenges or so-called missions are temporary, all right? They evolve over time. And I think this is important because um, if you take a, a complexity approach of innovation systems, uh, as opposed to a functional approach of innovation systems, if you reread the work of Stan Metcalf, for instance, uh, they were already talking about temporary innovation systems. They were already talking about problems and solutions kind of uh, evolving over time in a kind of autocatalytic way, uh, leading to the kind of uh, temporarily um, uh, confluence of actors and, 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 and assets to solve certain problems. Um, so I think this is important to, rather than start adding types of systems, I think this is important to uh, to to uh, to remember. Uh, the other gap I, I think is in relation to the um, to to the role of of regions in this agenda. Uh, so if you hear uh, scholars talking about mission oriented or, or challenge oriented or transformative uh, policies, there uh, there is an implicit assumption that these are global, associated challenges are global. Therefore, they are best dealt with at the national or supranational level. And um, they neglect the kind of contextuality and place sensitivity of social needs. Um, and I think this is um, this is a mistake um, because uh, places um, uh, experience uh, challenges in a different way and they are uh, differently equipped to, to deal with them. And they have the, the contextual knowledge to address them as well. And also policies are local, uh, they're locally implemented and the whether we can solve those associated challenges or not will depend on uh, actors implementing policies on the ground. Uh, and in, in a recent kind of uh, paper, um, we argue that there's a geography of problems uh, that is different to the geography of solutions. So um, not all regions can uh, come up with technological solutions, but all regions have problems, and I think we kind of need to um, understand that and acknowledge that. Um, so, of course, regional scholars and uh, or many of uh, of you are in, in, in this conference have been uh, starting to acknowledge this kind of normative tone, and I think there's been a flurry of um, uh, of scholarship, of, 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 of contributions in, in recent years to try to kind of embed these normative approaches um, coming from transition studies, coming from uh, innovation studies into uh, 
the way we think about regional innovation policy, kind of away from that kind of um, uh, static and and kind of um, non-directional uh, view of regional innovation policy. Um, so uh, efforts to uh, embed ideas from regional, uh, so from um, responsible research and innovation, um, from uh, geography of sustainable transitions, thinking about green, uh, regional green restructuring. Um, a recent paper by uh, Todlin uh, et al. talking about challenges within the region innovation systems. Um, another paper is trying to think, okay, how regions can can deal with these challenges, right? So there's uh, uh, regional scholars are kind of taking this um, um, this idea forward in 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 number of contributions um, to overcome the the lack of directionality of previous approaches. But I think that the literature still um, doesn't ask, doesn't uh, question how societal needs, problems are defined, and demand is articulated in markets of form. And I think for this, we need um, to bring in um, insights from other disciplines, perhaps political science, uh, sociology of markets. Um, so it's, I think, an uh, uh, interesting area of, of research. Um, and we're only starting to scratch the surface. Let me try to move to the next slide. Yeah. So. In um, in a recent paper, uh, we take this, we try to take on this challenge, and we argue well, demand, the market creation, um, we know is important, and some authors are arguing that it's important. Uh, is the key mechanism of path creation. Path creation can be, um, you know, driven by not just new knowledge, uh, changes in productive structures, but also from the demand side. Um, and so markets are not just out there. Uh, challenges and problems are not just out there, they are they are constructed. Um, and articulating demand uh, or problems and new solutions requires an understanding of the problems of needs and defining the opportunity space for solutions, kind of taking uh, or, or, or um, using the um, the language that uh, I mentioned just now for, of, of problems and solution spaces, for, uh, Vance Vogue and, and, and colleagues. And in a, in a paper of a few years ago, we take this idea of conversations, right? Uh, um, discursive arenas where problems um, are, 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 and solutions are, are discussed between buyers, users, and especially um, specialized producers. We use this to um, come up with a framework to understand uh, um, public demand and public procurement, but I think it can be kind of um, used more broadly. Because also this has a geographical dimension. And um, in the literature and territorial knowledge dynamics, they talk about uh, place dynamics and, and distance dynamics. So these conversations can be geographically anchored or, or, or footloose. They can uh, consider the place qualities in, 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 in those conversations. So they can bring in uh, um, actors and, and especially uh, users, sophisticated users and, and, and um, uh, specialist um, uh, kind of knowledge producers in the conversations. And also they can be conducted in a single location. So if the problem is unique to the region or in multiple locations, if it's served by other locations. So. Uh, there is a geography of these conversations and this place dimension. And of course, the state plays uh, a number of roles. Um, it can be a um, customer or, or buyer, a regulator, a co-developer, an innovation, uh, innovator, uh, and so on. So what we did in a recent paper is to um, take this uh, framework uh, of uh, problems and solutions and distinguish whether they are um, clear or contested or, or there's a consensus about the solutions, let's say, and the same with the problems, whether the um, problems are clearly understood, identified or agreed upon, so there's low complexity, or um, alternatively, whether they are poorly articulated or, or fragmented. 
or perhaps uh, the needs are not clear, the who's responsible is not clear, uh, there's not sufficient knowledge about it, and, and so on. So we did, we kind of build a um, typo um, yeah, typology of situations. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, in which uh, the public sector plays a different role, and there is a different um, um, scenario for policy making, and there is um, uh, different types of public procurement, for instance, and also uh, of um, different roles for regions. So in in this situation, we were talking about. Uh, so we don't understand the problem, we don't understand the solution, let's kind of um, try to understand it a bit better, let's try to kind of pre-commercial um, instruments to uh, uh, let's increase resources to um, bring together key actors, key users um, um, to, 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 to try to understand it. Um, and there are like Examples uh, which of this what well, are called mini missions uh, of cities, for instance, trying to use uh, using um, SBRI type tools uh, to solve problems that they have. Uh, so, um, which can be technological problems, could be social problems. One example that comes to mind is homelessness in Manchester, which is actually a mission to to drive a solution for it. It's a complex problem. Um, but of course, the the challenge here is how you scale this up, right? And um, and uh, good practice does not travel very well, and uh, often you need um, key user or um, lead user to um, uh, to scale up these solutions. Uh, and this brings us to the next um, typology, where uh, cities and regions can use. Uh, as areas where the public sector perhaps uh, has a strong um, purchasing power, where it has uh, perhaps um, is a sophisticated user and has a key challenge around, let's say, in transport, in health, education. Um, and here uh, it can be used as an opportunity to bring together um, actors, regional actors, to solve this kind of complex problem and even can bring in uh, diverse clusters and, and, and promote uh, unrelated um, um, variety and cross uh, sectoral uh, collaboration to solve these kind of weekly problems. Um, now, it's not um, all, uh, let me see, the other kind of scenarios where uh, we know that, uh, you know, there is a technology, perhaps it, it, uh, the availability of technology is not a problem, but the problem is that uh, it's not being used because uh, there's no clear market. And this is uh, very common in kind of general purpose technologies uh, where this uh, Bit of a chicken and egg problem. I know uh, co uh, colleagues in Norway are uh, discussing this kind of problem in in, in uh, technologies such as hydrogen, um, where the um, region where the, the the technology is there, but the market is not there uh, to be used um, uh, for these technologies to to be developed uh, at scale. So the private sector does not invest because there's no market. Uh, the, um, there is uncertainty in the regulatory environment. Uh, there is no direction um, of, of that could drive investment, and so on. So in this instance, uh, the uh, problem is more complex, or the situation is more complex, and requires kind of multi-scalar, multi-area policy mixes. Um, and and the public sector here. Uh, acts as a catalyst uh, for the development of these technologies. Um, and of course, uh, not all regions can develop um, technological capabilities, but many regions can uh, act as um, uh, or can lead in the applications of these type of technologies. 
Um, now the and the final scenario is a situation where kind of uh, problems are clear, solutions are more or less clear as well. So there is less uncertainty, um, and we hear capabilities might still not be there for uh, firms to uh, use this um, sufficiently to solve associated challenges. Uh, so one. Uh, situation that comes to my mind is currently in the UK, um, public sector contractors for large scale um, um, uh, works, they have to have, they have to, um, uh, they have to have a plan for net zero in order to um, bid for uh, public sector contracts and also contracts uh, um, value up to 20, 30 percent, the aspects of social value. So the idea here is that um, the markets are shaped in a way that uh, they, um, they favor solutions that are more ethical, more sustainable um, and, and, and not just the cheapest. So the, um, the public sector leads the way in, in better, more sustainable solutions. OK, um, kind of coming to the end of uh, my presentation. Before that, I'm going to give you an example. Um, in a recent, uh, we've written a couple of papers on, on the case of Galicia, which we found was very interesting uh, because well, this is a region that is um, kind of in the uh, periphery of Spain. So it's the periphery of the periphery, if you like. And a, is a region that it is afflicted by kind of um, problems of industrial restructuring. It has mature industries, uh, aging population, and also um, uh, vast and rich natural resources. So I've been um, following the uh, smart specialization strategy where they focus on the need of restructuring, but also um, the acknowledgement of um, um, assets such as the natural resources and also uh, associated challenges such as uh, aging. And at the same time, a acknowledgement that not in order to solve these problems, uh, they need to kind of connect with global value chains and um, they can be the region can be um, um, a testing ground for solutions that they can be scaled up subsequently in other places. So I think they have been quite original in their thinking. Um, and in the in one of our papers, we um, uh, we look at how they use uh, public procurement. Is the region in Spain with the with that has pioneer, pioneered the use of public procurement of innovation, uh, which is quite interesting. And they have used it um, in the past to, um, uh, in relation to, um, to sectors such as health, for instance, where they could be lead, lead users of um, innovative solutions. But also more recently, um, they have used it for uh, um, industrial renewal. And one of the things that uh, we found interesting um, how they uh, leverage so local needs and challenges around uh, managing of resources, prevention of um, forest fires, and a number of other things and other problems that the public sector had um, with a new solution that they thought could lead to uh, industrial renewal. Um, so they identified uh, the sectors of uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, drones, um, as potential for um, diversification. And instead of just trying to develop the technology, they developed the market, right? So what they did is to articulate public policy problems, uh, land management, uh, coastal uh, uh, surveillance, uh, forest, um, you know, a, a number of, of, of public 
policy problems into concrete demand that they then communicated with industry to see, okay, how can you help us, right? Um, and they, at the same time, they um, influence national regulations. Uh, they thought, okay, regulations are uncertain for this. Let's try to demonstrate uh, how the technology works. Uh, they have an infrastructure, they have some empty space in the middle of nowhere that it could be used for testing uh, and it could be used for attracting industry that could come to the region and test the solutions. And uh, they develop strategies to anchor the solutions to, or to anchor the industry and the supply chains to the region uh, through uh, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial policy um, and, and, and other um, and other policies where they try to get this kind of lead uh, industrial users to the region. Um, and the attractiveness for them was the opportunity to test solutions uh, with, um, um, you know, with the public sector, with a knowledgeable public sector uh, that then they could take to other places, right? So when we talked to them, actually, they found that rather than receiving R&D subsidies that don't really help very much. These um, projects, these um, public procurement projects were a lot more helpful um, and, and uh, secure a lot more commitment to the region. So it's kind of led to a new path creation in the region around this technology. Uh, still too early to know, but I thought the scale of the of the um, of the, and the ambition of the strategy was quite interesting. And behind all this was kind of a strong leadership, of course. Uh, so it's also a story of, of agency and, and, and uh, institutional entrepreneurship. So um, I don't have time to give you more details on that. I'll just refer you to the paper, which is about to come out. Uh, but I'm just going to leave you with some final thoughts. Um, and. I think there is um, interesting work still to be made to uh, move from this um, kind of technology based approach, the supplier side based approach, towards one that is both place based and problem based, um, where uh, prioritization for uh, industrial policy, for um, innovation uh, policies is not only or is not overly focused on the productive specialization uh, of regions and, um, and you know, um, discovering uh, op entrepreneurial opportunities, but also about uh, specific local problems and values that can open up and create new opportunities. Um, and these efforts can lead to temporary innovation systems that provide opportunities for diversification um, and so regions can be uh, lead markets. I think uh, this is what Galicia is trying to, to do, uh, can be lead markets for solutions and innovations with applications in other countries. Um, and this, of course, requires a kind of uh, coordinated approaches and, and, and um, strong leadership at the local level. Um, and it's strong, it, it requires uh, regions to think in, in terms of the use of a broader repertoire of interventions, uh, not just re reduced to um, supply side interventions, but also a more creative use of uh, demand side instruments to save uh, markets. So with that, I leave you here. So I'll look forward to your comments. Thank you very much. Uh, so, people, please speak back. Uh, came back with with your uh, with your faces <laughs> and ask for questions. <clears throat> Floor is open to questions. Well, before you are uh, gathering ideas, maybe I, I, I should first. So, this question is in Green Deal and how will uh, how this will change innovation policies? And people um, tend to think that this is pretty much just kind of. Uh, nature science field, but uh, it seems to me that uh, it's quite opposite. It's, it's rather more uh, social sciences uh, who should 
bring technologies, soft technologies, uh, bringing those new business models and behaviors to people, because uh, this is quite much uh, uh, abracadabra for 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 uh, most small firms, and 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 uh, well, they learn to sort uh, the garbage, but uh, there are much more when when we speak about energy. Uh, schemes and uh, now when the situation is that uh, you have uh, queues in the petrol stations and and um, uh, the gas and and the energy prices tripled just in in few months, so there is a big shock. If you look to your uh, metrics, then is this public procurement soft uh, approach enough for that? Maybe we need something more concrete and and faster. Yeah, I think it's it's not enough. Um, and it's just one, because um, that's the other thing, um, I mean, a lot of that literature on public procurement, it sees like a, as a panacea, but it, it needs to be used in combination with many other interventions. Um, and I, I, we see that in the, in the UK a lot, that um, the so Innovate, Innovate UK, which is the agency that gives um, grants and, and, and uh, for uh, innovation, they have these different programs and they have the kind of pre-commercial procurement programs where they're trying to, um, adoption of which is very small because it's not very well, very much used. Uh, and then they have the other things, but they, 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 they're not connected, right? So what you need is a kind of a, a coherent package uh, of, of interventions that looks at um, regulatory um, chains that looks at, um, uh, you know, demand market creation, um, that looks at um, targets, that looks at um, uh, supply chains. Um, and, and this is something that, I mean, the UK, there are very high ambitions uh, for um, climate change and all this uh, kind of um, uh, targets, but uh, I think the implementation is, is not joined up at all. No, no, far from it. Okay, more questions. <clears throat> okay, Roman. Yeah, I really like this. I Thank you very much for this exciting uh, presentation. I really like this uh, idea that, or this uh, sentence that you had that the geography of problems is not the same as the probably the, the geography of solutions. So I found that very appealing. Uh, and then I was wondering a little bit if there is a, isn't, isn't there a tendency that, uh, that uh, regional policymakers would, will try to, to find, uh, to identify problems in their region and to find uh, solutions also regionally? Uh, can you say something about this? Uh, is that is that the case, or is are there any ways how policymakers should, uh, so, or any strategies for uh, mm. finding solutions outside the region? Anything? No, that that's a really that's a great question, and and I think um, so. First, regions need to be uh, selective. So we know from smart specialization that uh, regions kind of do everything. They have to prioritize, they have to be selective. So um, they have to be selective in terms of their kind of challenges or mission and also the kind of innovations that they try to pursue. Um, and also uh, problems, and I didn't have time to um, talk about this very much, but what we're trying to do in a, on a paper what that we are uh, developing at the moment is uh, we use um, the literature from political science around framing, right? So is uh, you you have problems in regions, but also you need to frame them. So you can frame them in different ways. So you can frame them as something that is only affecting us, uh, but you could also frame it into in more broader ways. Sometimes it's not possible because it might be a problem that you know is. Um, uh, also, the urgencies, the time dimension is, is is also important because maybe it's a problem that everybody has, but we have it stronger and it's urgent, we have to deal with it. Um, so you might, the way you frame it, the way you frame uh, problems will, will determine uh, the solutions you, you find and the kind of um, uh, the, 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 the landscape for, for solutions. Um, so 
regions have to be kind of smart in the way they smart <laughs> in the way they they they, they frame this uh, and there might be um, in some situations uh, like for instance if uh, they might increase their market if they frame it uh, in collaboration with other places. So, I don't know, Amsterdam uh, had a problem of uh, greening the transport fleet, right? So they uh, join a network of cities uh, with the same problem. And by doing that, you uh, expand the market. So you will get better, uh, more sophisticated solutions by doing that. Uh, so, in some instances, it makes sense to uh, join forces with, with other places to come up with better solutions that might be locally or globally. Um, so, it, it, I think there are many combinations and I, I, I think those are decisions that need to be made in a kind of um, intelligent way. Um, but there are, the, yeah, so the, I think you can, so in that paper we, we talk about scaling up and down, um, kind of the way you frame um, uh, problems and also the networks that you involve um, in, in um, driving the solutions. So, yeah, thank you. For, that's a great question. And more? I was thinking about uh, but Andreas Rodriguez Pose has been already written uh, for, for several years. This is core periphery and, and also people in the peripheries are not satisfied with the, with the situation. And especially those old industrial regions which lost quite a lot during the, uh, during the uh, transition or the globalization even, you know, moving uh, production to Asia and so on. But uh, now we're facing another, another this kind of big change, especially in those uh, more strong industrial regions. So, is there any any um, well recommendations for for uh, policymakers of those regions so that uh, they will even more uh, will not even more uh, um, dissatisfy their people, and then what kind of innovation policies should that should it be uh, in, in these old industrial uh, regions? Yeah, that, that that's of course um, uh, yeah, and so this. And, and that's something that I think in, in the original paper of Andres, uh, he was talking about like these places, I don't know, and we, we have many of those places around here, in fact, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've been to Blackpool in the UK. Um, they're, they're quite grim actually, you know, but the problem is that also uh, in these places they have been told that they live in shit places, right? <laughs> Sorry for that. They, that they, you know, that the places have no future. And I think that, um, and it was uh, in the past, they were actually told the only way uh, to have a future is to move away from that region. There must be an alternative, there must be another way, right? And, uh, and in many of these places, there are fantastic assets, right? Uh, there might be kind of, uh, the infrastructure might be um, dated, it might be, um, but it's the, it could be repurposed, and I think what what I find here, at least in the UK, is lack of imagination of policymakers, uh, right? So if you go to many of these places, you see clearly there are fantastic assets, and they can be test beds for um, technologies for, um, uh, you know, experimentation. Um, I mean. I always joke I should be made the major of Blackpool because I have so many ideas about how to regenerate that place. Uh, but it's just being left alone, right? Um, they're not interested in places like that. And um, I think um, they are, they, there is this supply side bias uh, that you just less develop new knowledge it's about new industries, of course. It's not going to happen in many of these places. So you have to rethink um, assumptions. You have to think in a different way. Um, so 
um, yeah, and, and if you don't, that's what happens, right? That there's a revenge of the places that don't matter. And, and you see that in the UK very, very strongly. Uh, but, uh, and, and politicians talk the talk, but they don't do anything. Uh, and all this talk about leveling up, uh, or the only thing that, what it means in practice is that uh, cities such as Manchester, they, they will get developed as much as they're already doing very well, but it's kind of um, surrounding areas which are um, doing very poorly that are not getting enough attention. Um, so I don't think I answered your question, but the, my point is here that uh, uh, they need to rethink their assumptions, they need to think in a completely different mm -hmm. way, and it's just the the default is just uh, more R&D, uh, more universities, more knowledge creation, um, uh, but not enough about people in markets. But maybe also more stress on place marketing and empowerment of these communities. Who, yeah, exactly. saying, they have those assets, but they're not using them and they just yeah. uh, uh, lost, lost their hope. Yeah, but if you if you tell them they're like there's no hope for them, you don't give them the powers. Also, the austerity for the last decade is not kind of kind of um, hollowed out these places yeah. completely. So uh, you, you can't expect these places to kind of reinvent themselves. You don't um allow them to so of course mm -hmm. we discussed yesterday with marco in some occasion and and uh, then there was a conclusion that uh, this mass specialization is a nice idea but it's hardly uh, takes roots in everywhere in europe and only in few places and there's a major lack of, of actually those leading persons who can actually carry out the strategies who will uh, which will empower people and uh, move on to the new heights all right. Uh, last question, if if you have any. Everybody is so hesitated, so exhausted after this hard, long conference. Moritz, please. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Um, at the beginning, in one of the first slides, you were saying um, that hardly anybody really um, asks for how and by whom um, goals are selected and formatted. Um, how would you study those? Do you have? Like an idea methodologically? Oh, good question. Uh, so <laughs> the point of that, um, <laughs> the point of that that uh, comment was that uh, exactly the, these challenges and these missions are just imposed from the top down, and it's like, well, yeah, but is is that necessarily a challenge for us? Is that uh, so? Who decides on these challenges? Um, so, uh, and it is true that um, regions kind of, um, if you like, uh, decide or, or also on on how. Uh, I mean, to some extent, uh, they decide or they 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 think about the priorities, um, but that is kind of taken for granted. It's not that uh, it's, not, it's it's just like or oh, oh, this is the, the priority. But how was that selected? Um, um, by whom? Who are the actors that uh, chose those? Those um, what are the values that the kind of um, the region is prioritizing? Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, in, in here in Manchester, the so we have a. Um, or we had a, a, an industrial strategy at the national level. They selected these missions. Uh, but they're kind of top-down missions, right? And uh, supposedly the whole country needs to contribute to those missions. Um, but those missions might not be relevant for the place where you are. Uh, so uh, it would it would make sense to um, kind of incorporate the kind of bottom-up um, uh, deliberation. And and um, is the point there was uh, shouldn't we pay more attention? Uh, to um, how missions or on, on who selects them, uh, who's who benefits, uh, who's left out, right? And I think the the frameworks from responsible research and innovation, for instance, uh, precisely ask these type of questions. And I know some regional scholars are trying to bring in these frameworks of uh, inclusivity and ref uh, reflexivity and so on. Um, 
uh, to this um, decision making process um, of uh, who decides who benefits, uh, who should be included, uh, and, and, and so on. So um, you're right that it's not, there are people talking about it, but I think that there needs to be kind of more um, um, acknowledgement of, of these issues, not just taking the missions for granted, which is often the case. You mean? I'm also forgetting it. Uh, thanks, Morris, for the question. Thanks, Oliver, again for for your uh, very comprehensive and good answer. So this is also also actually the uh, closing session for for the conference. And um, uh, well, uh, when we uh, designed this conference, then we also were thinking about uh, uh, future publications, so that uh, we got got a nice catch here. And, and I know that uh, uh, Marta has already some uh, uh, one 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 uh, special issue in the pipeline, and I've been uh, eagerly uh, referring uh, some uh, European planning studies uh, papers lately. Uh, so I hope that Louis uh, Albrecht is pleased and and will also <laughs> consider our proposal when when we uh, put together one bunch of, of papers and uh, and. Uh, and then maybe also my colleagues uh, from Tallinn and Tartu University have a similar topic, uh, Katri and uh, Tauri, so maybe they also figure out something, uh, some joint, uh, joint uh, uh, volume, so that uh, we will, uh, uh, yeah, keep in touch with you uh, after some uh, um, a nice weekend. <laughs> Without uh, conference in, in in your in your in your in your shoulders, <laughs> and uh, the second point um, we will have in in few minutes a meeting with uh, Norsa uh, representatives, uh, led by by Marco and and uh, Eurasian Studies Association uh, representative. Uh, so and also next conference will be probably uh, proposed uh, in two years time. And hopefully this will be then already in, in normal conditions and and not those thumbnails um, in home offices <laughs> looking looking to me. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, in in general, about, about the numbers, we got uh, 81 registrations. But of course, in this situation, when you have only you're focusing on your uh, interesting topic, then then the maximum was uh, something like 40. Uh, presenting uh, uh, present in, in one session, which is actually quite normal in 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 normal conferences. You have usually 10, 20 people in, in the session, so that this is this is quite okay. I hope. So, hopefully, you got some good ideas, uh, some 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 new knowledge, and um, see you somewhere in in real situation in 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 next year probably. Not, not this this year is <laughs> too much to hope. <laughs> Okay, anyone yeah. else willing to say something? Thank you, Gary, for organizing all that. Yeah, I must say that I've been organizing some three or four conferences before, and this was the most uh, troubled one. So that uh, you can't control uh, Bill Gates and his software anyhow.